Something else, too. It's something you have to give Miami all the credit in the world for. I saw this stat earlier today, and I almost fell out of my chair when I saw it. It's, it's mind-boggling. The Miami Heat have played 20 playoff games to this point. If you look at their point differentials quarter by quarter, it is truly mind-blowing. And it speaks to how poised they are, the fact they've got a number of veterans, one of them, again, Kevin Love, being inserted into the starting lineup, which was huge for the Heat. Listen to the Miami Heat's point total. I'm sorry, uh, uh, point differential quarter by quarter in the playoffs. You ready for this? First quarter, minus one. Second quarter, minus 11. Third quarter, minus 12. Fourth quarter, plus 90. Like that, that doesn't even that doesn't even make sense, you know, for a team that's in the finals. But when you have a team that's got the superior coach, that's able to make adjustments, that's got tons of shot makers. Again, I, I heard a lot of, and I, I watched the pregame show and, and during halftime uh, on ABC, and not to take a shot at any of those guys because they do a spectacular job. But they were like, "Yeah, well, I mean, if Miami's hitting their threes, they're hard to beat. But if they're not," Well, here's the thing. Miami has been hitting their threes. That's why they're here. I mean, again, people talked about, oh, you know, uh, Miami missed a bunch of their threes in game one. Well, that's kind of going to be the case the whole series. Why? They're number one in the playoffs in three-point percentage at 39%. Shocker, shocker, last night, they shoot almost 50%. You knew that they were going to make those adjustments. You knew that those shooters were going to be more locked in. Max Struess being 0 for 10 the last game. Four for ten in this one, with most of those makes coming in the first quarter. Actually, I think might I think all of those makes might have come in the first quarter, if I'm not mistaken. Duncan Robinson, ten huge points in the fourth quarter. All about execution, all about poise, and again, and this to me was probably the most underreported storyline going into these NBA Finals. Miami's got a bunch of dudes who've been there and done that. Denver has really two. And even that, even both those guys were in limited roles. KCP, who won a championship with the Lakers in 2020, and Jeff Green, who I'm pretty sure has only been to one finals. I could be wrong of that, but went to that one finals with LeBron James in 2018 with the Cavs. Miami, psh, most of the roster has been to this stage. Jimmy, Tyler Hero, we'll see if he comes back. Um, Kevin Love has been to four finals. Well, this is actually now this is his fifth has a championship from 2016. Kyle Lowry, this is his second finals. He won a championship in 2019. Like, they've got plenty of... Bam Adebayo, obviously, was, was on the Heat team that went to the finals in 2020. Udonis Haslam, and people like to laugh at this, like, oh, old man doesn't play. You don't think his impact is still felt for Miami? He is... This is now his seventh NBA Finals appearance as a player. You don't think that plays factor in any way, shape, or form? I think it does. Denver's never been here. Miami has. You saw how much more poised. By the way, you even saw it in game one. You even saw it in game one where you had Denver's up like 20 plus going the fourth quarter and Miami cuts the lead to like eight with three minutes to go. We're like, dang, Miami that may actually come back and win this thing. They were more poised, more comfortable. Spo made the adjustments that I knew he would make. And now it's tied 1-1 going into game two on Wednesday night. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube. Be sure to click that big red subscribe button and go check out the other clips and full shows of Carving It Up Live. Have a blessed day.